Welcome to the first episode of the Vangera and Smiley Show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tell you, today there will be one on one episode because no KO, no curry, no crack, no kawa. So it's just me and Vangera in the studio today. Vangera, the hobby things. Charlie, 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 Charlie. No government to be forced for this life inside. All the governments, they no get it. Why Czech Republic gov- government to the stress for that side of they say unemployment day low, but the money I know they see stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, then do some data. We they say what 2.7 percent. I think that's the lowest in, across the EU. So, 2.7 percent unemployment rate. Yeah, 2.7 percent. Mm. People enjoy wow, 2.7 percent. That like so, and I'm sure people you get very like strong social support system. So even if you're unemployed. You don't really be motivated yeah. to find a job. No, 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 you for you for fine job. Uh, you for fine. You get any yeah. stipends and they give Bro, for that's unemployment. Bro, they give citizens then. You they look me at the whole check passport. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, right now, we get some black money, get dash passports, they step on our yeah, next yeah, stop. So yeah, we, we make it, they make it take your passport. It be cool. <laughs> make it, make it take it. It be cool. It be cool. Make it. Anyway. It's a media as usual. We're gonna be lashing, but how we go do one? We just for endure. Sorry, so yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have a lot to talk about, so Charlie, let's jump, let's jump right into it. Right. And the best place to start is the most important result of the season, which happened at Wembley. Man United beat Man City two one in the yeah, FA we Cup. Are very <laughs> foolish. We are very foolish, but you. We are very foolish, but. <laughs> You are, you are very foolish. You, you, you are all correct. You, you never seen that. You never seen that. Champions of the 2024 FA Cup. You never seen that. So now I see the way you did bread. Don't be lazy. All I've ever seen, I'm a bit too opportunity to be a baby. You are very lucky that all of us missed that last episode. Because... The way that I ginger for that episode where life happened and I couldn't join. You air passed off. But anyway, me why congratulations. Church. Take anyway congratulations to Man United on winning the most important trophy of the season. Because I, as I know, we all know... Hey, 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 move on, move on. As we all know, the FA Cup <laughs> is the oldest trophy in, in, in football. So the oldest trophy, you know, if you tell me say trophy where you can't meet them, be more important. So FA Cup is the most important trophy in football. But let's move on to the second most important trophy in football. Real Madrid won the Champions League again, beating Dortmund on Saturday, two 0 First of all, the results were something that nobody really uh, was surprised by because it's like probably the most obvious uh, Champions League final. Apparently, yeah. And apart from memory. Dortmund versus Bayern, even that one, like if you throw your mind back to that time, I think the Actually, gap between yeah, Dortmund, Dortmund had then Dortmund get Lewandowski, then good Gundogan. <sighs> it was a strong team. Kagawa, Kagawa. So yeah, no, that, mm. I think by then Kagawa had less because that was 2012, 2013. That was Fergie's last season. By that time, mm. Kagawa already come United. So yeah, Safo, we for figure you just go if you go by nobody. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> the most obvious Champions League final in history. Real Madrid have gotten their number 15. They are already looking forward to number 16. Charlie, how do they keep on doing this? Um, Hello to our listeners. I think we have to all agree that Real Madrid almost free saints. <laughs> That's the first thing that we all have to agree because it cannot keep happening that Almost every final that they've played recently, the other team practically starts better, gets the bet, gets better chances, misses some way somehow. Like on on Saturday, it was as if the ball practically just refused to go into the net for Dortmund. There was nothing the well, Ademi. Next time, make it a chop for chop banku, <laughs> but. Jump yeah, like <laughs> practically, <laughs> it, like they had the best chances. They were they were the better team for most parts of the game, and still, it's almost as if that that that's just not good enough against Real Madrid. 
So I I I, I just I look they they only keep getting away with it also because of the mentality of that club. Charlie, say whatever you want about them. Those people are relentless. Like if they pick my say we won't win this thing. If they for top ground, take them out, I hit the ball, make it go, then go do. Then go do. How do you tell me that uh, Kavahau won a header? Have you seen his height? But he won a header against some, some, somebody like that. Then that person tore past him. But he won the header and it was a goal. And then from there, it was just managing the game with monsters and crazy people like who they got at the back. You don't have a chance. So it, I just think it is very fitting that after they won it, Don Florentino just says, we are looking forward to bringing number 16. And that tells you the mentality of the club. Just winning is not enough. Winning and you know continuously winning is what they require. So I don't know. Me, I'm not a Madrid fan, so I can't say I'm happy for them. But even even number fifteen, most likely nobody ever could catch up to them. We just for ourselves say them be the kings of Europe, Champions League. You know they not play. So if you don't want Madrid to win the Champions League, you have to need them by round of sixteen or quarterfinals max. Because if they get to those knockout stages, it's over for you. Yeah, that, that's how I think they keep getting away with it. They start to sacrifice teams from round of 16. You know, what you said about nobody will ever catch up with them. You know, maybe in hindsight, the Super League was a good idea because, like, we all go start from zero again. <laughs> <laughs> then we all try to solve because there's, mm. there's no way. I think right now the closest team to them is AC Milan. AC Milan are never getting back to the AC Milan mm. that we used to know. So I think maybe after that... in, like, the next 10 years, they go few wins from one. But not if they keep taking Chelsea. Re- Chelsea reject players. Uh, I think the financial nah. gap is just too much for them to ever get. Maybe Which they get funny. a good coach. If they get a I, good I'm coach, I'm sorry, like, but yeah. this financial gap thing too. You can't tell me the Premier League teams don't have money than Real Madrid. I I genuinely think we do. Mm, I, I, I genuinely think, think we do. No, but the, the soon soon then they call. If you get if somebody can tell you say Real Madrid they won't buy you. 15 Premier Leagues, then Arsenal won by you. Zero Champions, uh, 15 Champions League, Arsenal, zero Champions Maza. You see, <laughs> that's, that's the biggest advantage Real Madrid have because mm-hmm. everybody wants to play, with them, play for them. And they also don't sign too many, too many players. I think one thing I would say is that you mentioned their mentality and everything. Their mentality is not just about what they do on the pitch, but it's also how they handle their um, footballing Tra- uh, operations in general because I think Real Madrid are probably the one team in football in Europe that isn't being swayed by peer pressure. They know exactly who they are and they stick to it. I can say they are probably the one team that isn't desperate to find the next Pep Guardiola. Uh-huh. They are the one team that is very specific about the kind of players they sign. They don't just go around giving anybody the opportunity to call themselves a Real Madrid player. I see Real Madrid like um, like a very exclusive club, like a, maybe like mm-hmm. a gentleman's club. Mm-hmm. It's very, very hard to get in. And they know how to just keep setting people out and they know who to allow in. So, for example, if maybe you have a summer where Real Madrid need a striker, exactly like maybe last summer when Benzema just left, they needed a replacement. They are not going to decide that, okay, since we know if we get first choice, we will go find some sixth choice. It's either they get their first choice or they go for an ex-academy player like Huselu or somebody who has that connection to the club, somebody who understands what the club is. Because if you are buying a world-class player, for example, he's already coming with that world-class mentality. mentality. And if you are taking someone from your academy who has gone and he's now coming back, he also grew up with that mentality. He will in, I won't so, come back. He, the, the call no, no end. So if you say yes, exactly. <laughs> and when those type of players do come, they are very desperate to, to prove themselves. You know, we do have mm-hmm. a situation where we oh, just come lays about and do what. Nah, no, 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 no. He's no, no. coming to fight for like an opportunity to stay. The to only to your player I would say they bought that quote unquote Omar Bokegu is probably Eden Hazard. 
No one like I would even because that thing. No, but think about it. His time He's, there was very uneventful. Yeah, they keep yeah. paying, you know, even by winning, I mean, they have to pay yeah, us some, some five, five, seven million. million. Yeah, <laughs> Marina with that. So you see, Hazard, for me, I would even put Hazard in that bracket because in the end, Hazard was one of the best players in the world when they signed him. It's just that he didn't work out. So you know, be saying, no, go but that's what from, I'm saying. Like, you know, be like some Anthony that go by way, no workout. Yeah, yeah no, I'm talking the about it from the, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about it in the context like, he is the only signing that, even though they went according to how they sign players, okay, they go according to out. their model, is the only one in recent memory that actually didn't work out. Like, he went, yeah. Charlie, if we have been honest, it was really bad. <laughs> it was yeah, really it, bad. It, 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 there's nobody who really, really bad. That. Because I remember when they first, when they first signed him, and that day when they were unveiling him, I think 20 or 30,000 people were there. Yeah. It was, it was a huge crowd. And, and everybody was like, Ooh, we've got Hazard now. He's going to the right, um, to the left. You know, they were putting all these graphs together. And, bro, like, after pre- he came out from preseason and they were like, this is this fat guy that looks like Hazard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Is and, and from there, I think, and the, and the Madrid fans too will not allow you to do nonsense. Yeah. Bro, those fans yeah, are so standards. demanding. Bro, they are so demanding. I think the only people that they are the only people that Florentino Perez is afraid of. The fans. Those are the only and truthfully, he doesn't I think he doesn't even care about the Real Madrid board. Because as far as they keep performing on the pitch, uh, they they will keep getting their money or their dividend or whatever. And even about that, I think Real Madrid too also have this system where they keep their ultras out of the stadium. So I remember reading something about that. They, are, they have this way of selling their tickets or something that keeps the ultras out of the stadium. So they don't have that presence inside the stadium. I don't know whether it's also because they fear them or maybe they may just be too giddy giddy or something. But, but still, yeah. but still, even the ones that are there, the ones that they hold their white handkerchief or whatever, mm. that, bro, you you can't come and mess about. Like, I don't know if... I, I'm pretty sure you've watched it. But you watched the Beckham documentary and he speaks yeah. about them. And, yeah. bro, they they will judge you very quickly. Like, this will give him time, new country. No, 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 this is Real Madrid. You don't have time. You yeah, come no, here... To, you talk that to Spanish, Spanish media are also very invasive. So they, they are not just looking at the football aspect of things. They are also diving deep into your personal life. They then they go then go hide your bush, the, your, the, some bush for your house in back. They try to pictures of you through your kitchen, then kind of thing. So Real Madrid, the pressure over there is huge. But yeah, like I was saying, that, I think that exclusivity that they've created for themselves, it just gives them an extra bit of aura. So it's like, mm-hmm. even when you sign for Real Madrid, there's this... There's just this special feeling and there's just this thing that enters you that makes you always desperate to prove yourself. Even if you've already proven yourself, you just want to prove yourself again and again and again. It never Have ends. you noticed that there's a way you must dress on your on your on yeah. day? Yeah. Like that. They have mm-hmm. some suits be. Because <laughs> that you nobody can tell me that somebody like Kamavinga he come to Real Madrid as an 18-year-old. He already gets that winning mentality from start Rene. No. Like, as soon as you walk through the doors, there's just something that enters you. And besides that, I think Real Madrid, another baffling or mind-boggling thing about this Champions League win is the fact that it happened in a transition season. Because this mm-hmm. was a season where they didn't get Benzema. Um, they, they didn't get Kane. They, they didn't, didn't get, get Mbappe. They, they didn't get Mbappe. So Bro, they had over... Like at the beginning of the season, they had Courtois out. Yeah, they had Courtois out. Then at some point in Alaba. time, they had Alaba was Alaba out most of the season. Um, oh, Militao, Militao, Militao. He yeah. also got injured, went out. Even Kepa, their yeah. second who became third choice yeah. goalkeeper, was out. They didn't have a proper striker. And some way, somehow, I hear they lost just one game in there. They lost one the... game. In fact, they lost two games all season, both Jesus against Christ. Atletico Madrid. One. In, in the La Liga and then one in the Copa del Rey. That was it. They won every other game. Like, one drew So, it not be like some game, teams so. where they did some country be England. Where then they do <laughs> transition. Then, two years, trophyless. Yeah, it'd be cool. Ah, uh, okay. 
So okay. that's the okay. that's the crazy thing about this because like nobody expected them to win the Champions League this season. And if they hadn't won the Champions League this season, it wouldn't have been. Nobody a would have voted them because, and like that's another thing because you know like considering all the injuries and everything that happened, not getting Benzema. See how Man United, we need a striker. We maybe we know if you get one our first choice, you go out and go and find a very ghost or something. You need a defensive midfielder, you know, get money, buy who you want, then you go and get Amrabat on loan. Real Madrid don't do that because they no one give just anybody the right to call themselves an ex Real Madrid player. Okay. If they know if you get, then go manage with what they get until they get. And that's what the difference between want. them and Barcelona. Right yeah. now, just yeah. anybody go for be Barca player. Yeah, anybody at all can. Yeah. Like, Charlie. You know uh, Kevin Prince Barton is a former uh, Barca player. You know, that was what I was trying to say. <laughs> a wash job Kevin Prince Barton was a wash job. Paulinho and things all play for Barca. Aye, Paulinho was very good for them, though. Yeah, he but like, I mean. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, in a transition season, them winning it, it's, it's very, very mind boggling because I don't think there's any other club in football that can win the Champions League in a transition season the way. Like, Champions League success is usually like a combination of a long Three, four period years of build. Uh-huh. You Look at build. Chelsea. How many years did it take for us to get to 2012? Even from 2008 to 2012, it's four years. Man City. Look how much they struggled. How was they had to go through to finally get theirs? PSG. Yeah, how many they years? For, like, their... They've had prep for how many years? <laughs> PSG. <laughs> to now, still, they're not rich. They're not... Us now. I hear him, yes. <laughs> like, hmm. To win it under these circumstances, like it's very, very crazy to me. And yeah, kudos to them and kudos to Ancelotti, who like now questions have to be asked. Like, is he in the good conversation now? Because I don't know why. I don't know. Is he is the way I don't know how to express it. But I don't know if it's because he coached Everton or because he coached Napoli at some point. That's why people they act like this guy is not this guy has won the league everywhere he's been. To start off, he's won the league everywhere he's been. He, yeah, people they feel talks. So he no get tactics. He get only eyebrows. If he move, but that is also a tactic, because if he move in eyebrow, they watch the wire like this. All of a sudden, they know what they are supposed to do. And you can't tell me that that is because there are some robots. Where if you raise raising eyebrow, then no. But he has told them what he has to, what they have to do. So for me, as for me, I've always had him up there. You know, maybe my top three will be Pep, Fergie, Mo. I, he pips, he does it not just pips, he beats Venga for me. You know, oh, if, I'm, if I'm doing a top five, Venga I have did. Pep, <laughs> Pep, Fergie, Mo, then I'll have Ancelotti and Venga. This will be my top five. And Venga, even Mo and Ancelotti. Five. Ah, Charlie, me, I don't know them Marcelo Lee people. So me, I will yeah. take the people where me are not. I mean, okay, I mean that one they understandable. Like if but mm. even if like cause obviously me, I go put like Trapatoni and um Your age the show, your age the show. <laughs> <laughs> if if at least at least if we are limiting it Trapatoni. If we are limiting it to maybe even twenty first century managers. Me, Venga, honestly, I'll even put Diego Simeone at the, at, ahead of Venga. Because for Simeone to take Atletico Madrid to two Champions League finals, to win two La Liga titles in this Real Madrid Barca era, like, mm. honestly, I raise that over anything that Venga. Okay, maybe the Invincible season, yes. I would think even though that Invincible season, I still raise the top. Because, Charlie, Invincible mm-hmm. season where you draw like how many? One billion games. Like, but I <laughs> said. Mm. Aside that, I think Simeone has also done some amazing stuff. I think Klopp has also wait, done wait, amazing wait, stuff. Wait, 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 wait. But for me, look, at the end of the day, there are certain things I look for. And f- number one, your trophy hall. If you put all these people there, maybe you can someone who say Klopp pips Venga to in terms of trophy because he has what two Champions Leagues? One, two. one Champions League. Another one final. Champions League. No, two, and, he's made the final three times. He's won one. Yeah. So one Champions League. Then he has one Premier League. Two Bundesliga from two Dortmund. Bundesliga. One from Liverpool. Hey, somebody will be talking to he to get a Japanese league. We see what he do plus Monaco for France. So 
I don't want to I don't want to be <laughs> over sentimental. <laughs> but look, they they just the the kind of shift he brought in the game in England is is just too palpable for you to overlook, right? So I'll have Venga in that head made of club. Yes, that they drink creatine and things. We talk trophies. We say, club two, oh. come right now. Oh, club two, you can what you do? You say all oh, the Liverpool players get asthma. <laughs> so they won't be. They won't change. The... <laughs> they don't be real coaches. Since they, but they yeah. ah, yeah. yeah. use about. terrorists. They have money. They do. They, I mean, we, we, they make no good. We all know say the players, and they just. Uh, it, 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 they, they give them things. We don't want talking it. I don't want to talk it. If it come out, maybe be like accusation number one twelve. Maybe. You know, but outside of but, but like for instance, if Diego Simeone identify no style of play and all of that, but again, trophy hall, not 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 enough. You know the reach. So because of mm-hmm. that, then they go fit their top ten. Like it go fit their but top five tro- uh, managers of all time. Let's limit it to 21st century because be all time game. Okay, fine. 21st century. Because all time, then your age study show. So I see that. But yeah, I I I absolutely have Carlo there. And I think I, I, like this week I was reading a lot of the commentary on, on the win. And and I saw something that I absolutely agree with. Those two finals that he lost. He's lost, you know, he's lost two Champions League finals. The P3. One, that, that especially that three, that that was the last time in my life. That three three, it did something. It changed the man, changed the man. If something like that no change you, I don't know what the game will be changing because that's the, no. still the most mind boggling thing we've ever yeah. witnessed. Honestly, that three three. So, if, if you just think about it, having to manage this Real Madrid side, he doesn't have a striker. No complaints. You know, just make do with what I have. You know. Have those kids right now? Both Modric and Cruz can't be on the pitch at the same time. So one for go there, and the other chuck the knee. You be cool, yeah, be cool. Then you, they go swap. You know, but still giving the confidence to someone like Kamavinga. Like for me, he was the man of the match. Absolutely brilliant on that day. Absolutely brilliant. You know, uh, Jude Bellingham, who just came this season. Also having that kind of impact, uh, like look at the ball Vinicius played in the second half. Like in the second half, it's like when they went inside, as if they eat, they swat they, they will join and they take do their sacrifice for the <laughs> for the halftime. <laughs> so so he came back possessed. Do you remember there was a time that Kavahau couldn't go up and down because Okobia hamstring is gone. All of a mm. sudden, this is we know they hear that things. <laughs> Like, just, you know, Rodrigo and all these other... So, for me, nah. Always been in good conversation. And as I said, if somebody said, look, I downgrade Mo and put Ancelotti ahead of Mourinho, even though as a Chelsea fan, it will hurt me a bit, I can fully understand and appreciate why. Because five Champions Leagues. Five. Ah, okay. Vim. For me... And get like you know a lot of people. The thing they use against Ancelotti is his league record. That he's only won what six league titles in a what twenty eight year coaching career. On for me, on the face of it, it's it's fairly poor. Yes. But then, mm-hmm. for the first year of his career, let's like break it down small. First year of his career, he was coaching um, Regina or something in Italy. So we make we reduce him from twenty eight years to twenty seven years. Mm. After that, he was coaching Parma until what nineteen ninety eight. So from twenty, we reduce him from twenty seven to twenty five years. It be mm. from nineteen ninety nine way like he starts coach big teams. That be when he start coach Juventus. Juventus too. He was only there for two years before he moved to AC Milan. I would say the biggest maybe in terms of his league record, the one that I would say is the biggest failure to some extent. Is the AC Milan period because he was coaching AC Milan for eight years and he only won one league title. And for the oh. AC Milan team that he had, it was he like it was, it was a superstar team. But at the same mm-hmm. time, this was in the middle of Calciopoli. He was going up against what Juventus, who had their trophies stripped, and 
they were doing match fixing and things. Even though East Milan said them also implicates them for that thing inside that, but theirs wasn't as bad. So they only mm. got a point deduction. I think they only got eight point deduction or something. But it was Juve who were demoted. So, so basically, the though, league wasn't being won on the strength of the football you are playing. So people they sit exactly. somewhere they there was, cook their, their games. Exactly. There was a lot of match fixing going around. Chelsea, two years. One year he won the league. Second year he was second and won the FA Cup, I think, or something. Or was it the league and yeah. FA Cup in one season or something? League and FA Cup in one season. Second year, I think just FA Cup, but they sacked him. Yeah. He was second. The, another maybe failure, I would say, was the, I think, at PSG. He was I think the, the, he Paris, was the, one. the Paris one. He was there when Montpellier won the title. So that's one too I can put an asterisk next to it. But for Are me, you, the general wait thing... Too, you see, it be like, it's just like the time Leicester win the league. One season be, you yeah. quite got there, there's some freak team from somewhere who can't like, do something. Don't like be even a this season, Even though we like with the bash two and things for buying and everything. Like somebody go and beat it. What do you want me to do? Like, like <laughs> they go and beat it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, yeah, we didn't take Basham mm. and everything. Say, yeah, buying the big games for win the league. But, like, if you look at who I'm competing against, if the next team then go and beat it, like, then go and eh, somebody pay, win the fifth score 97 minutes, then go can score. <laughs> <laughs> then they like, play two to 97. Pep Self never go and beat him. So, like, what's exactly mm. he wants from me? Like, I did my best. Yeah. But, yeah, like, if for me, like, you can also take out the everything years. I think after Bayern two, there was also ah, a period. Yeah. Even so Napoli like if, too. So if you break it down, maybe out of the twenty eight year coaching career, there's probably like, like eighteen 20, or 17. eighteen years where he had a legitimate chance of winning the title. Now, winning also like putting all that aside, winning six league titles as a manager is actually not a bad record at all. Because it be Pep and Fergie where they make it look like. If you be top manager, if I win 10 and 15 and all of those How things. many league titles that Mourinho have? Two, three, Inter, four. Did he win the league with uh, Real Madrid? Yes, he won one. Five. Is that he all? come back Chelsea. He come back no, to Chelsea. I count that one already. Three. Oh, okay. Yeah, then as... Inter. Inter, how many? One or two? He won two. The, six, uh, five. One for Spain. Six. Abio. Porto. Seven. Porto. Eh. Seven. Seven. So, <laughs> so, and I think, um, like I was saying, Trapattoni too, I think he also won five or six. Or, mm. I think he's the most, dec- I think he might be the most decorated Italian manager. So if he is, it might be seven. But it's mm. within that period. I can't think of many managers, like in the top five leagues, who have won more than five league titles. Like, it'd be something Check, like, where, like Champions League, the way, uh, so Pep and Fergie, Check like AC Milan and okay, AC Milan said Barca did them back one or two. Mm. But Pepe Feggy check like Real Madrid. Yeah, and everybody them, else did did they back. Behind. They you know if you like, like you know if you judge you know me, you, you know if you judge me because I don't get fifteen Champions League titles. <laughs> like, Those people are mad, and they have no one to like, tell them. You mean like Ronaldo and Messi then score 50 50 every year, so uh, right now if somebody scored 30, mm. then you say, Oh, you know, really score like uh-huh. that. But like, <laughs> right now, if you go buy new cycle, when I be young, when we own all they say minimum, minimum 15 goals in the league. Like, how <laughs> somebody win somebody like a few years ago, I never can take like 19 chop golden boot and things. So, like, mm. football, everything is now going back to default settings. So, again, like Ancelotti winning six league titles, it's a very respectable return. And okay. if anything, it's like, yeah, even if you the top say the league titles, no plenty. Charlie has won five Champions Leagues. So, like, I don't want you to know hear anything again. Like, if you, are say, if you are saying that Champions League is the most important trophy in club football, and I've won five, then why you still hold them against me because I only won six league titles? Like, I've won the trophy that is more important than the league title. And on top of that, too, you could also say that the league, Man City have shown this season that you can win the league without beating your biggest rivals. Like, mm-hmm. you don't, they didn't beat any of their top six apart from Man United. And Man United, I keep saying, it not be achievement to beat United in this era. But the achievement <laughs> if United beat you. Move I on. mean, if, if trophy come plus some, silverware come plus some, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So the thing is, like, he's won five Champions Leagues. The Champions League, if to win the Champions League, you are beating the best teams in other leagues. So that one day, like, mm-hmm. you can't say that somebody wins Champions check, like, League, league. Really deserve more. Like, yeah. So, so in the end, like, no matter what you say about his league record, once the Champions League record be crazy as it is, you can't hold it against him. So yeah, like I say, me right now, I go put him. You see, me, if I did push Pep for things, it did pain my heart. Like, I did hate give Pep any form of praise. But you know, I have yeah. a choice, bro. He's like the good manager of all time, bro. That guy has me, 14 in, my, in 15 years. In my rankings, what do you mean? In, do have in, my ranking, in my rankings, I still put Fergie above because I, I, I like how in the build up to the Champions League final, then everybody with Toxie, the last team, the last person to beat Real Madrid in a cup final. Was sell Alex Ferguson with Aberdeen, Aberdeen, in the Cup Winners Cup, and this was when the Cup Winners Cup was number two in the hierarchy. Because back then, the Cup see, was make number three. Make I explain to you that time. Then they not discover them a juju man. Mourinho he take the juju man come. Boss, I no go take that one. I no first and also you know in that Cup Winners Cup in the semi final he also beats Bayern. So okay, fair with enough. Aberdeen, it's not be fluke. Beat, you know, flew. 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 On top flew. Two, flew. <laughs> in the Scottish League too, we have, uh, Rangers and Celtic had won over, like about the last 25 Scottish League titles before he went with Aberdeen and went to win three. So Fergie did like if they did limit if like even his career then they limit him to just the Man United part of things. It depends my heart because even before United, he do some. But yeah, uh, me I still have Fergie as my number one. I have Pep as number I two. It's not an issue. Having Fergie at, at the top is not an issue at all. Yeah. Fergie number one, Pep number two, and then um, Ancelotti is now in my top three. He has surpassed Mourinho mm. in the 21st century. Yeah. Actually, yeah. if I make him top five, honestly, I don't even, I don't think too much about who I will add as the fifth person. The club and since then, I was just bringing up names, but like, I don't think deeply about them. But I, I think but, for five, I think the top five, man, Benga has to be there, man. It's just Charlie. He went up against Prime Fergie, and he went. The, he won the league on beating. He draw like eighty-four million games, but he still went on beating. <laughs> and now on beating, he has for me in my head. It has a lot of. It gives him a lot of brownie points, man. You know. Yeah, so we also I know like they risk up like that. So <laughs> I don't know. the way he sees it, the way they hate Pep, which <laughs> they hate club. You don't do me anything to do. And they hate that pass. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like I for do more research to think about to before I can confirm that Venga will be my top five. Like I for go watch the Serie A guys. Yeah. Make the listeners, make the listeners, l- listeners, comment mm-hmm. and tell us who is yeah. your top five. Who top five? In yeah, first, actually, 21st century. I listen to 21st century because 21st century. some people, somebody could go mention some coaching name from 1942. <laughs> <laughs> because they're no boy. <laughs> <laughs> you are so let me guys and teams who will come in there. So yeah, we beg them, pa. You are but quite yeah, Actually, but still mm. on the topic of Real Madrid, just as they mm. finish winning the Champions League, they are thinking, what more can they do to surpass this? They've come and added Mbappe to the soup. Who, like, who can stop Real Madrid now? Because, like, I think I know I think Mbappe is bad luck. Well, lie, I think Mbappe is bad luck. I feel like. I don't know, and this could be me just hating. <laughs> it could be just <laughs> premium hating, right? But I just feel like it will be very normal or very, very on brand for the footballing gods that Mbappe could join all of a sudden. They don't know if you're winning it. <laughs> they, they know the like, falls, they know the score goals. Okay, what's he going to do for? They can't tell so. Maybe they'll win the league. But they're not the force for Champions League, then things. Then they eliminate them for quarterfinals, semifinals. They know Shada, they see him, he will score two, but the other team will score three, two. Then some bastard. It's very, it just feels like that's what's going to happen. But then outside of that, bro, I didn't see him going anywhere else. None of the English clubs. Immediately, Real Madrid came to the scene. It was bye bye. You know, I, I, I listened to. Podcast was there a podcast or an interview? With somebody, I think either he was a, either he's a coach or he's a director of football, or something like that. And he was saying that if you go in for a player, 
and you hear that Real Madrid is interested, the Forget. whole world, the whole Europe, they just resign. Okay, let's find another alternative. Like, Real Madrid, you and Real Madrid go fight over the same uh, oh, <clears throat> Maybe we just move on. Move on. Move on. It's not, like, it's not necessary to think, go back. If you think you got a player who Real Madrid wanted, it just you say, they didn't want him that badly. Yeah. If they want you badly, it would just be, you know, he's one of them. He's teams, a... I think fans forget <laughs> that teams make a lot of inquiries. So even just because yeah. a player is linked, teams are doing a lot of research background. Like, then just go call this player, is he available? Like, if he's available, how much you could take? Oh, and teams. Yeah. Yes. But it doesn't mean it's concrete interest. They were just interest. testing the waters. So if look, they at, look at Liverpool. To... How, how, look at how much Liverpool did on Jude Benham. Well, also because they didn't have money. When when yeah. push comes to they didn't have money. Freddie, you put no get money right now. To you, put start to use uh, terrorists their money. Al Qaeda and things, ISIS their money. You then you will come meet me for help. <laughs> you know, but immediately Real Madrid came on scene. How quickly they sorted out Jude Bellingham's deal. You know, by way they have to pay not more like thirty million or something. Um, but it be really? cool. It'd it be cool. They're on the base. Real Madrid, Real Madrid be the only team where if they put clause for inside, say if you win Champions League, you'll get something. You actually go get your money. Nothing. Next year, we we'll go do that to inside. Got... <laughs> you know, you know I, I actually think it's probably standard. Like, if Real Madrid no one pay the money, they will just say, okay, mm-hmm. if we win Champions League, we will pay you 40 million. Then, mm-hmm. then, then you go to, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, because you know you go get them. Like it make like somebody you can borrow your money and you know that this person you be trustworthy, you go pay me. Yeah, you go, <laughs> go pay. Yeah, it'd be normal. <laughs> if somebody like Chelsea or something, if Tottenham tells you so if we win Champions League, Maza is it this? You know, make them the preload that's it. If Tottenham say they go finish top two self, I'm not gonna take <laughs> <laughs> it. Nah, my man. It, it's it's just I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how they jig all that together. That I think in my head, my head tells me it has to be well, Kylian is Kylian. So wherever Kylian wants to play, probably on the left. Uh, um, I think. Let's you know. I think they play Mbappe on the left. They play Vinicius on the right. And then they play Rodrigo up top with license to rotate. I, I mean, I get it, but right now, Vinicius also has a huge ego of his own. The thing is, even though Mbappe is also like he'd be big fish and everything, right now, it'd be you, they come into my territory. Vinicius mm-hmm. also has the right to feel like he's the best player in the world. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to win the ball. And if he, if he does win it, it even strengthens his position even more. Exactly. Hey, like maybe I'm a so, bad man. Like it's for me, like you're saying, I think it might there might be a, an issue that comes out of this transfer. Like tension, some sort of friction. The something. thing is I whereas I understand what you mean. On the other hand, it's Ancelotti that's managing them. It's weird. Yeah. That guy has some way of making sure if it was any Every other manager, reason. I say this doesn't work. It might be hard. Yeah. Da, 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 da. But it's Ancelotti. He would just that, put his hand around everybody, invite everybody for pizza. By the time they finish, Mbappe say, okay, let me play mm. center back. <laughs> I, <was laughs> I mean, that's true. And even back to that, like, I don't even want to take us back, but like, this thing about Ancelotti, I think one thing about him is that I think he's shown and he keeps showing that Man management is probably the most important attribute for a manager. Ahead of mm-hmm. all the tactical knowledge and all of those things, man management is the most important thing because man management is what determines whether your tactics and everything go work. You can have all the tactics in the world, you can have all the intelligence mm-hmm. in the world, but if your man management isn't up there, it's not mm-hmm. going to translate to the players. So, like, unless you are um, a autocratic like Pep. No, for me, you even know. Pep, Pep, for me, I think that even though he's also like a brilliant manager and everything, I also think that he's also a brilliant man manager. And that's what makes him so effective. Because the way I see it, there are going to be a lot of Pep clones coming out of football. And like, even right now, there are plenty of Pep clones and they'll keep coming and they'll keep coming. But there's a reason why all those Pep clones, 
no matter how much you try to copy his tactics, you not get the same level of success. And it's because mm -hmm. Pep the person, you can copy Pep the, tact the Pep's tactics, but you can't copy Pep the person. Mm -hmm. So, and all the other brilliant managers we've seen, it's the same, like Fergie, all those other guys. They have this aura like about those them, days when Mourinho, like even look at Mourinho at where do you go for the match now? Mourinho, man management, if it, this nobody. dead Mourinho self, as the, you go uh, for the match, you go see them go they run through wall given because you know he has this affinity and way of you know he's a taskmaster and he's very tough, but and and they all handle it in different ways, right? Like for instance, guy guy never keeps saying. He doesn't know how to call, say, uh, Feggy, like, uh, say, Alex. It has to be boss. They yeah. can't stop. So, no. You, you know, yeah. it has to be, because he's such a, like, you don't mess about with him, right? Ancelotti feels like those people that, he, he doesn't seem like he's scary. He's very nice. Like a father but because figure. he's very nice, yeah, he's because he's very nice, you feel so bad that you disappoint him. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Hey, and because so you are not afraid of him, but you just do not want to disappoint him, you know. And and yeah. so those those are the like attributes, and that's what I think a lot of young men. When for instance, when Ateta first burst onto the scene, and I know if Corey was here, say hey, would you like to use as an example? But if <laughs> the young coach right now, he the first before use him as example. But when he first burst onto the scene, his man management was really bad. He was very bad at it. I think. As he's grown with the team and it's five years now at Arsenal, which is crazy because you know be not saying it'll be right now he can five years. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, he I think he's get he's gotten better at it. And now, you know, the players love him and they want to run through and now he can pick up a phone and call a player even that Arsenal wants to sign. Even no one's but someone I like think sometimes Hag, look at Tenag is probably the perfect <laughs> example. <laughs> you know. I think the thing too is that sometimes it's not even that you become a good man manager, but the more they see that your tactics are working, then like sometimes too, they just buy into it. And then maybe even though like they just respect what you say more because they know that, okay, this guy, what's the work? They work. Yeah. So then that one too, it's that one too also did. So it's trust. Somebody like, somebody like Allegri, I don't think he's that brilliant of a man manager, but I think he, um, because of the success that he had, the players just bought mm -hmm. into it. So then in the end, that aura just feeds onto you. But it all comes back to that aura that, like, in the end, it, it manifests itself in different ways. Some people... You as a manager some people... ought to have personality. You ought yeah. to have, a, whether it's charisma, whether it is father figure, whether it yeah. is, you know, Strictness. attention to do. Whatever it is that you have, you need to, as a manager, and that's why certain managers don't really succeed because you can't really tell what they're trying to be. Pochettino, for instance, you can't really tell, are you a taskmaster? Because sometimes he sounds very tough. And, you know, I remember last year preseason, I was watching and they used to show some of the, the uh, sorry that I'm bringing it back. It's the best way I can explain this, right? <laughs> Listeners, wallahi, that's not a point. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> He was teaching our wingers how he mm. wants the movement he wants them to do. And I remember Diego Moreira, kid, just signed, made a mistake, and he, he went ham on him. Bro, the guy couldn't lift his head up the whole training session. Because he he, he missed the way and a punch at him. But then we come this season, look at how undisciplined Chelsea's players were. The most disciplined team. We've ever had us like we had over sixty cards. Do you know how crazy <laughs> guys? So on this, I remember at the, at the beginning of the season we were collecting yellow cards for fun because every time they'll be complaining. Look at this penalty issue. So we can't really tell if you're a taskmaster. It's actually virtually impossible for your team to be that indisciplined. You understand? So whenever you as a manager, you don't really have your own personality, Charlie. It will hard give you your tactics for be extraordinary. You and know. another reason why I also believe that man management is the most important thing is that if you look around, actually some of the best tacticians in football are actually assistance managers. It's mm -hmm. just that they don't have the man managerial skills to make their tactics translate to the players. 
So in the mm -hmm. end, they just have to work under somebody who knows how to do that. So a lot of the best managers, they actually have somebody under them who is a very, very brilliant tactician, even mm -hmm. if they themselves are great tacticians themselves. Fergie had Carlos Queiroz under him. Carlos mm -hmm. Queiroz, his, uh, his issues with Beckham, you mentioned the Beckham documentary. He and mm -hmm. Beckham didn't see eye to eye at all. And Beckham kept talking mm -hmm. about how he was like his man. And then he go meet him for Real Madrid too on top. Um, even ah, he was the manager that benched Beckham. Yeah, he go meet Be Beckham. He was assistant manager to Fergie in his last season, and he's actually the one who told Fergie that Beckham's uh, Beckham is in decline, so they should try and sell him as fast as possible. So Fergie sell him to Real Madrid. I see him summer Real Madrid appoint him, so he go follow <laughs> follow Beckham to Madrid. Is they... <laughs> like you again? Yeah, you again. <laughs> Like most mm -hmm. and like most of the best managers, they have like a very brilliant man manager under them, but they like, they have a brilliant tactician under them, but they don't have that. That's why a lot of assistant managers, everybody go hype them. This person is brilliant. He's this. He's that. But the moment he gets in first job, you go flock for them. Mike Phil, unless you man go United. start from some, unless you Mike, go Phil, uh, yeah, Mike Phil and Man United. Then they hype say Fergie's last few years, he was the one doing all the work. If he they give the players the tactics and things, if he Fergie he just oversee things, then give him a first job within six months and Saka. Every mm. like so, these things like it's very it's, few of them go to like McKenna. But yeah, back to Mbappe because I I'd be like I threw us off course small. But yeah, <laughs> back to Mbappe. I think because of like the dynamic that he's going to meet, if he decides to fall in line and accepts that maybe if they say they want to play him as a center forward, he accepts that role. That's fine. But if he go and he starts to agitate at some point that me, I want to play left wing and all of those things. Because already, I think there's also a possible struggle down the line where mm -hmm. they are all battling to be the main man. Because for me, if I'm Vinicius and I've been the main man until you came, for me to be relegated to a backseat role and right now we won't build around Mbappe, it depends on the ego he has. If he's mm -hmm. okay being the Robin to Mbappe's Batman, that's fine. But if he too, he wants to continue being in that Ballon d'Or picture, I don't know how that could work out. Or they, Even... or they will fight. And did you know the funniest thing? I remember when Messi, Suarez, and Neymar were signed, and you know everybody knew Messi was top down, and knew Neymar had an ego. You know everybody wanted him. Hey, 19 minutes. Tell we say Chelsea sign up. Be cool. <laughs> you know, and and then he came. Maybe it doesn't really correlate directly because Neymar was less of, but he came with huge, yeah, you know, was, clouds. He was a but huge. But somehow, them internet. three found a way to make it work. As for that thing, is the probably the most unique trio we've ever seen because all three of them were Ballon d'Or level talents, but all of them were just happy to take a back seat and just be there for each other. None of them were mm -hmm. selfish in that in that trio. There was one season where Messi was eager for Suarez to win the Pichichi. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo never mm -hmm. would do that. Ronaldo, aside the fact that he clicked well with Benzema and Bill, he would never accept that this guy who can win Pichichi ahead of me. No way. But that Messi, Neymar, Suarez, it's like they genuinely liked each other and they wanted mm -hmm. each other to flourish. And that's what worked for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it would work with the ego that Mbappe has. Vinicius, I, I can't say for sure that he has a huge ego because up to now, he's worked with people who are very, um, very malleable. And they are, Benzema, he didn't have that I'm the guy type of ego. He was very happy to be both a scorer and a creator. He okay. never really wanted that spotlight for himself. Rodrigo, too. Mm -hmm. Rodrigo, if anything, I think he might be the one where the friction comes from. Because Rodrigo's best position is on the left. Okay. Till now, he's been sacrificing to... Because uh, obviously... Make you pick mine, then just downgrade come Chelsea. Make you just pick mine. Come, come which can Chelsea. I beg, who do we want them the left to? For we them, like... we, if we sign Olise for yeah. the right like this, we didn't hear somebody for the left there. Make you just can't slot him. You get Mudrik. Enjoy your Mudrik like that. <laughs> is that Mudrik? <laughs> But yeah, me, I see mm. that, like, it's possible that in, if anything happens, because Rodrigo has already passed some comments in the past 
that suggests that he wouldn't be happy People playing. Like yeah, like, and he wouldn't be happy playing out of position for a very long time. Like, he's already, when they first started playing him as in the middle, he passed the comment that he doesn't actually like playing there, but he could play there for now. And now you won't, once Mbappe has come, it's the end of his dreams of playing on the left for Madrid because there's no way he did two, both Mbappe and Vinicius for the left there. Like, if for permanently accepts it, right now, me, I would be on the right. If you want to play, you have to either take the right or the central spaces. Exactly. So, or yeah, me, I see... Swap, then can't turn striker. But on each, they like the drift wide. So, so yeah, me, I see some <laughs> friction coming somewhere along the line. But on to... Our dearly beloved Chelsea Football Club. Mm-hmm. Like I said, plenty of teams in football are obsessed with finding the next Pep Guardiola. And oh. now Chelsea are going to find their own Santo bearded man. How do you feel about Personally, this appointment? I'm not a fan of Santo coaches. Because <laughs> only there's only one Santo coach, all the others them before. There are actually there are only two Santo coaches. Pep and Sean Dyche, the, the rest of frauds. Every who that guy's a fraud, a lie. He's a fraud, <laughs> he's a fraud, a big fraud. And Chelsea, Maris, too, when I last Santo coach, then he'd be this and he'd be Italian. No business who Di Matteo. No, Conte, you know, be Santo coach, so you go do head. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Conte, you know, where we you know, where to pay. You know, you know, be Santo pure. You know, be pure Santo. Then they had to finish on the side sentence. <laughs> if hey, the middle there, they finish. Yeah, that was all. They finish. It patches sentences. They come in. Yeah, yeah but um, I said in the last episode that if he's the guy that they want, fair enough. Welcome to Chelsea Football Club. It has to work. Immediately, it doesn't work, and they have to sack him. Those hideous trains have to go, cause this is their man. Like. All reports say this is the guy that they, for 48 hours they work to convince Bernard Bali and Toboli that this is the guy to go with. He's the one that suits our vision, so so and so. So, personally, I have no malice towards the guy. I don't know him very well. I've watched, ah, you know, if they say you get new coach, you will go watch all these tacticals. Not the Arsenal ones, because those ones are deluded. But, you know, the other tacticals and things. And, I've heard good things. I've heard worrying things. And um and maybe, just maybe, this might be the coach that helps our young squad. Because again, if you have young players, one way to get them to play very well is not to give them too much freedom, but is to limit them and tell them this is what I require you to do. And maybe that will bring some consistency in our play. But for me, it absolutely has to work. Like his first season, he has to make top four. I'm not taking anything less. He has to make top four. He has to win the conference league. And then if he throws in the cup or even makes a cup final, one or two, I'm happy. But he has to win one trophy next season and make top four. I, I don't want to hear, oh, it's a project that we did fourth, we did eighth. By December, then February day twelfth, then I would just struggle again. I don't, no, I don't hear anything. I want a consistent output of results. Of course, because it's new, maybe it will take time, make the players take the rest in. But in the midst of that, players learning your tactics be winning, please. I don't want to I don't want any stats like last season. One one win in five. No. I don't want that. So it has to work if they see this is the man they want to go for because he is very, you know. And he, the funny thing is, a lot of people keep saying that he's very much Pep Guardiola, but he doesn't take, he doesn't see his Pep Guardiola. He, he likes to say that his influence is very much on Johan Cruyff, you know. He so, just they won't run away from the easy comparison. No, I mean, you know, like he go in school. Where you know Cruyff? Where you know cry for? I be I be I be go in school for. It be like the coaches school you go for Spain. Oh. The time mm. he did, Z- was it Zaragoza or Betis? But he's played under some very incredible managers, right? He's played under Carlo Ancelotti. He actually played with Antonio Conte. Oh, really? he, yeah, he played that Juventus. He played for Juventus. Then he played for Sevilla. So he won two 
cap or club uh, what do they call them? UEFA Cup. He win two for there. Then then he played under uh Pellegrini, you, you see. And then all those so he has some interesting education. That one day it be true. That he's worked under of course he's worked under Pep. He also worked under Pellegrini at West Ham. And then yeah. So welcome to Chelsea Football Club, Enzo Mareska. Hopefully as a fan, I want it to work and I hope that it works. But if it doesn't work, less so about Enzo. I need those two hideous twins gone. Those two, two sporting directors. If this doesn't work, it's on them and they have to be sacked. Because this will be their third permanent appointment. And it can't be. The same way they tell GFAC, they know if you make the same man go appoint coach give we so then they know they work. It's insanity keeping them on. So they would have to go. So and then then they close it, they, they get some four window. This is the also the last transfer window in that four window cycle. So this summer, their necks are really on the line, those two sports directors. And I want to see how we progress as a club and as a team and, uh, across across the, the next season. Hopefully, good things happen. Hopefully uh, we we have to absolutely at the very least make the conference league final. At the very least. Because bro, if you see the difference in Coefficient. It, somebody get 12. We day 99, somebody day 12. I don't want to hear anything. If we can't go Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, then since you for the win win their matches. Yeah. So that's that's my those are my thoughts on Enzo mm-hmm. But this is the thing about like clubs in general, because teams want uh, like instant success and everything. But you're going for managers who are very, very inexperienced. And, you know, like I said, is this obsession with getting the next pep? And right now, Ateta took on spoiler because, in fact, Ateta and Zidane, because both of them came to their clubs with very little experience and they worked out. So now it's given mm-hmm. more. Um, uh, Leverkusen, uh, Xavi Alonso too. Xavi Alonso too comes. Like, so now it's, it's made teams even more obsessed with finding their own, like, gem. Gem, and like it's rough a, in the gem. Yeah, and it's it's understandable to me. Yeah, but at the same time, like it's one of those things where it's high risk, high, uh, what, high reward, high, high reward. But if it doesn't mm. work out, too, it can be very dis- disastrous because five years. Like, hmm. like it's I don't know how you couldn't do uh, three plus one. Nobody, like, nobody will say that is short termist because. Why do you have to give him five in this with modern a club football. option of a sixth? Who in this modern that football? That Zona didn't take Group Potter, pay twenty one million to buy him out of the contract from Brighton, then sacked him nine months later and had to pay so much money to get rid of his staff. Ah, well, it's a yeah, huge, I mean the money huge, yeah, it's a huge risk that's why, to take. And, and that's why I'm saying that, from all intents and purposes, this is the director's. Because they are the ones who flew, flew out to Mabella to, to discuss salary, uh, backroom staff, why and why, then then with him. So if uh, you take when I'm money fly go, Mabella go do this, bro, I don't want to hear him. You absolutely have to win. If I'm to say anything positive about it, I would say as a Man United fan that I'd probably be more excited seeing what Mareska might bring than seeing what Ten Hag would bring next season because we, we've seen Ten Hag. <laughs> hey, are you trying to say two in two Ten Hag? He says that if you sack him, he'll go somewhere. What's going uh, on with that, by the way? Maybe. No, 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 say you sack him. In your... No, say, you it's made up you see, the FA Cup spoil matters. They wanted to sack him. Nobody expected that he was going to win the FA Cup. So now that he win the FA Cup, right now, it make like... If you sack now, him, they look somewhere. And it's made the decision far more difficult than it should be. Because right now, if you I sack him and so. the next person doesn't work out, right now, you look like a stupid person who sacked an FA Cup winning manager. A manager who won two and two. After the club had gone like five years without even winning a trophy. So it'd be one of those things where right now it might make sense. But in hindsight, then you go look very stupid if it happens. Because right now, imagine you go hire a new manager. We finish 12. 11. Right now, McKenna, everybody will talk to you. say one guy who McKenna <laughs> or Poch. Everybody will talk to you. You don't go win anything, so forget. <laughs> you see, like, everybody will talk to you. You go five years, you know, win trophy. Somebody come, he went two and two. 
he had plenty injuries, he still managed to do this, but he still sack him. You could look very stupid in hindsight. So I can understand why I can understand why they are being very hesitant to sack him. Like if they keep him, I go understand. But at the same time, I still want him out. But I also understand that the market for managers right now it'd be very, very shallow. So still on the topic of teams trying to find the next pep. Bayern 2 also went for the same company. This is what I call failing upwards. Because 10 years ago, if you told me that a manager would get relegated with, relegated with Burnley and then his next job would be Bayern immediately, like, you know, even be said Burnley Sakam, Bayern go poach him from Burnley right after relegating Burnley. I would have told you that you were mad. But yeah, like, <laughs> that was the yeah. era of football that we are in right now. Everybody is desperate for the next big thing. And company is, yes, like, outside everything that happened with Burnley last season, he's one of the brightest upcoming managers. So what do you make of that one? I think it's a, it's a purely, it's a purely uh, style of play based uh, signing or, or, or appointment, if I'll say. Largely based on the fact that company never departed from a style of play all season, even though it's relegated early. <laughs> He never departed from his style of play. We will still play this way because this is how I want my team to play. And I think sticking to his guns, I think what Bayern have seen, but he, he let's not forget, company does have a good body of work behind him. That underleg team that he handled was very, very, very good. Burnley last year in the championship. I mean, somebody will say, oh, it's Division 1, but the championship is still one of the toughest leagues to, to play in, in, in Europe. So, you know, you see that advert every day when they talk about the guy say he they watch Burnley game and make a neck lock. Company come then they pass in the bed then till he know they recognize him. Club <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but that's just because that is how he wants to play. Now he steps into a Bayern side. First of all, me I'm just happy because a black man is going to coach in Germany. Hey, I, I, <laughs> hey, okay. I'm all for the culture, bro. As far as I'm, like, hey, I'm happy. I'm happy. While well, someone sign you, I'm happy. He might open some doors, right? I'm looking forward to seeing how he handles the ego of the players in the dressing room. Because Bayern is one of the few teams in the world where they've given their players the power and opportunity and the players can come out and criticize the manager in the press if they think what he's doing is no good. Tactical, at the very least. You know, I remember last sometime this season, Müller coming out and saying, oh, you know, uh, the, you, you, as a manager, you can't tell us everywhere to be a micromanage everything because that's how two good coaches, you know. You, you have to step here. If you go two, two centimeters to the left, you're in trouble, you know. So I'm, I'm curious to see how he will go all of that because you have people like, you have Champions League winners in there. You have World Cup winners in there. So they all have some form of ego and it wraps off on them. And don't forget, you have German nationals in there. And Charlie, those of you, if push out the shove, the, F, the German FA will take their side. So forget. So I'm very interested to see how he would. I'm not so much concerned about the style of play because I think his his type of football will translate well with the German squad. Maybe he needs a new central midfielder. Maybe he might need a left back because it's quite obvious that Davies might be on the market. Um, yeah, up front you have Hurricane, so I don't even. I don't know what to say. You have Kumar on the right, uh, Sani on the left. Look, what more can you ask for, right? And then you have Noah and Post. But these are the same people that could, you know, people like Kimmich, people like Noya, Müller, even Sani to an extent, right? Players in there who have egos. How does he handle this whole Daya? Because Eric Daya was a very too cool signing. Will company like to use Daya? Or will he reintroduce Kim Min Jae? How does he handle Upamecano? Like all those things, I'm very curious to see how he goes about putting the squad together. But more importantly, how he manages the people. Because he doesn't have like, like, he doesn't have an impressive coaching scene, right? Plus, even if you had an impressive captain, you play for Man City. This is Bayern Munich. You know, an iconic club in Europe. So I'm very curious to see how he manages or he puts together and put, uh, you know, just brings all these things together to make a lovely dish and go and attack uh, Bayer Leverkusen 
next season. It will be very interesting to see how how he puts all this together. But I think it's a good appointment for Bayern Munich. I think right now it's just the way football is going. Clubs more and more and more increasing what coaches and not managers, not necessarily managers. They want coaches come and do your job and then leave everything else for other people to take care of. So. Uh, congrats, congratulations to him. I wish him all the best. I hope for his sake and for the sake of black men for work. Because Germany, dear, you know, shall we say, he decided to play some bomb ball and I got like, look at this donkey. <laughs> Suck him. <laughs> <laughs> <It doesn't... laughs> so, yeah, I, I look, I look, I, I wish him all the best. I hope that it goes well for him. Yeah. yeah, I just feel sorry for Harry Kane because, Charlie, as somebody who is trying to win his first trophy, this is not what. You want to see walking into I mean, the dressing room. I mean, you never know, though. Who, you who know, ever thought that Bayern Leverkusen will go unbeaten with Jabi Alonso? Yes, but in the end, the first impression as a player playing for such an iconic club is that I want to be coached by a winner. If it ends mm-hmm. up working well, that's fine. Fair but enough. then, yeah. like, that's not what you... Like, already he's going to be feeling very, like, on edge because you've already played your first yeah. season. You didn't win anything. Tuko was a winner. You are looking who is coming next, and then is this oh. person who is oh, not. But I, I reckon this next season they will probably win like Pokal or if they don't win the league, they'll probably they will win one of the cups. Uh, we will see. We will see. Me, I hope for a C because me, I actually want him to have a successful period of buying outside everything. Like I want him, I wanted him to win the Champions League and everything. So let's just hope that mm. it works out for him. Before we wrap up, let's talk a bit about the Black Stars. So earlier this week, they released the uh, squad f- to face Mali and I've forgotten the other team in the, cha- in the World Cup qualifiers. As usual, they did their whole Tom and Jerry games with the squad list that then go release them last minute and all of that. And that they, are, they informed the players who had been called up before they even came to announce it's like all those things that they like to do. And the most interesting part of the squad announcement was that the DIU has finally been left out of the Black Star squad. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't say it was unexpected, but at the same time, it also comes at a time when his club form was picking up just a little bit because I think he finished the season with six goals in 20 games or so for Mets. So that's a uh, lehav, sorry. Le Havre. So so that's like a decent return. So people were people like naturally, you know, even when he was at his lowest, people were saying that he should still be called up. So right now we he scored six and twenty. People detox say, Yeah, he should still be around and everything. I mean, my thoughts on that is very, very well documented. I think he should have been phased out like four years ago or something. But <laughs> yeah, we are he's still around. What do you make of that one too? I think it was long overdue. Um, and, of course, the coach did say that he didn't agree. The DIU did not agree, but he respected the decision. And I would, be, I would have been surprised if he agreed immediately, you know, considering the ego and everything that he comes with. But I think this is less so... Because uh, I tried to listen to the the press conference. I don't know if he did, but I listened to the press conference, listened to to pick up cues on what... And one word that the coach kept bringing over and over again was culture. Culture. That the culture in the Black Stars, where it's almost as if the DIU was sort of the designated taskmaster. And so people will not, he's the one that will make sure players are doing the right thing instead of, you know, the coach. And he would do everything, take leadership in everything. On one hand, that was good. That showed that he was a, a a person with an ability for leadership or an affinity for leadership. But on the other hand, that also meant that nobody was taking any responsibility for anything, right? So now I'm curious to see, because Otto kept saying that he wanted to change the culture. And even that's what he said he should be judged on, right? He didn't say judge me on. He said, I want to change the culture. That culture... Well, as that culture change is taking place, I also want to play good football. And of course, the natural replication of that is that if a team has a good culture and they play good football, naturally, the next thing that everybody expects is that results will come with that. I don't know if Ghanaians would give have the patience because he didn't ask for it. He didn't state timelines of how long it would take for 
any of these things that he's doing to come through. But he 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 just said, judge me on that. So I think Ghanaians are going to judge him on that. Uh, Dede Ayu, I'm happy that he doesn't come because, okay, fine, he scored six goals. But he played as an auxiliary striker. Now let's look at the Black Stars, right? Even if we were to play similar to Le Havre, that position is almost EMI for Kudus. Do you play Dede ahead of Kudus? No, I, I don't have him ahead of Kudus. So, so what exactly is he coming to do? And, and you know, there's also this thing, oh, you bring me, I'll sit on the bench. <sighs> he won't. You know you're not going to be happy sitting on your bench. Exactly. So at the end of the day, it's not necessary for you to, to lie, for us to lie to the world. The coach seems to be wanting to go in a different direction. I think the style of play that he wants to bring, fast pace, you know, a lot of movement, a lot of off the ball work, a lot of work with the ball, you know, good passing and all of that, creating passing angles. I don't think that they are used suited to that style of play as well. So for me, fair enough. I think the next person to go will be Jordan. Uh, so the day leaves, exits the scene. This is the best goodbye he can get. Uh, Amate is gone. I don't expect him to come back. Uh, of course, Wakasu and all those guys are also gone. I think the next person I expect to be phased out is Jordan. Um, one player that I'm a bit mm, on who didn't make it actually is the left back, uh, Raman Baba Raman. Yeah, he, he said... had a very impressive season at Pauk, P O K, whatever they call it, the club. Mm, and the he played very well for them, right? He played in the Champions League or the Europa League or one of the European competitions till the quarterfinals. So he had a very good season. He he said he won't come because he hasn't recovered from the booing that he received yeah. in Kumasi. It really traumatized him. Fair enough, he should take as long as he wants. Not too long. I though, mean, he should take as, I mean, as long time as he wants. I, I do agree with that because I, I do agree with that because I think to some extent, like as much as there are certain players who I don't like, I don't necessarily agree with the idea of booing players playing for the national team. Like, yeah. it's, a, I think it's a step too far in certain yeah, situations. Too far. That was too far. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I but, do I understand why he just but that, takes but this, But doing this, and that's like putting aside the captain of the team. Don't forget, did I use technically the captain of the Black Stars, right? Yeah. Puts a huge pressure on Otoado. So on Thursday, when we play Mali in Bamako, Ghanaians want to see what you've done. Like, this is the day that you've sacked him. You should be able to replace his impact or lack thereof. I don't know. <laughs> you know? And they want to see you actually coaching. I, I, I just hope that we come out with a draw. I don't think we beat Mali. But if we come out with a draw, I think that would be a fair... That would be a good, a good, a good outing in Mali. Because Mali is a huge banana skin in the group stage for us, like for this World yeah. Cup qualifiers. Because yeah. they are honestly, I'm very, very worried about that game in particular. And I believe that if we don't play our card right, they are going to top the group. Because I think we've mm. we've played two games so far. We lost against Comoros, and then I can't we beat... believe this shit. And we beat somebody like that. I can't even. But I can't believe this rubbish. We, we beat Madagascar like, and we lost to Comoros. So how does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. So know. yeah, we are, and, we've already put I, ourselves in a very <laughs> sticky situation by losing because by losing that's to Comoros. One, that's one of the games that you expect. Like when the group comes a stage, like the draw is done, you know that this is one of I the mean, countries they, you are getting six points you know, from. So. Can you imagine thinking you are going to avenge them from the half and they decide to slap you again? They didn't just beat us. Pass. They were the better team on the day. If they pay pass, <laughs> not if they pay pass, you go for revenge mission and then slap you pass the first time you even go. <laughs> that you got nothing. I don't even know what I'm expecting. <laughs> Look at what you guys did to us too. Tell it. <laughs> mm. Black stars. You know, but I, I think Ghanaian should just temper that. Look, we've, the, the Black Stars have not won a game in 2024. We've won one match in like 10 Afghan games or something. So, Ghanaians should just temper their expectations of the same way you pull out the special team from Baumiadems. Apply the same logic to Blasters. Don't expect anything. If they win, oh, sir. Wow. <laughs> and then they are too. But mm-hmm. if they don't win, you know they pain you like that. 
you know what? So that that that'll be my comment on that. I think Black Stars. There's not much to say, man. Uh, the love for the team is really gone. I'm looking forward to the younger teams under 17, under 20. Those guys, they couldn't win in the end. Like Kingston, that that burst up was not necessary, and they finished fourth. But you know that you can tell that there are tools, and there are you know that you know there's a, there's a skeleton being being drawn up in those areas, and hopefully um, we'll get our our succession plan proper and be able to move you know players from one division to the next because that's what we used to do well that 2006 squad they all came from under four under 17 and then then we just decided to go against the grain of not doing that anymore and now all of a sudden that doesn't make sense anymore so hopefully they draw or win if they can against mali and then from there yeah then otuado's project will work Oh, anyway, we've come to the end of this episode. Um, if you haven't done this already, please follow our social media pages on Twitter and Instagram. It's ATW Podcast GCR. On TikTok, it's After the Whistle. On YouTube, you can just search for After the Whistle Podcasts and you can subscribe to us on any of the podcast platforms Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. I think it's gone extinct now. So, you know, but Deezer is still around, Amazon is still around. Anywhere where podcast day we did it. So yeah, Charlie, thanks for this one. Um, this episode well, I was on first TikTok, off, so make them go search on our TikTok too. Yeah, after the whistle. So yeah, Charlie, this is the first episode we've ever had where it's just two of us on it. But <laughs> maybe we we really will name them after the whistle the smiley and my girl that show. Yeah, you know, you, I mean, no, you never know. In the you comments, know. reply to our Twitter. Let's see if if you want us to keep this thing going. We can have a special uh, if because <laughs> side you know, sometimes show, when, yeah. sometimes me and yeah. Smiley every day is quite no day. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, but we feel like okay, maybe the the the, the listeners need three people on. Yeah. So if you think the two the two is something that you want to, uh, you know. Enjoy if you want more the spin off well, to keep going. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let we, us we know. do the spin off. We know we don't get anything to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's somehow too long. Euros board they come. Yeah, yeah. Plenty, this, there's plenty action this tra- this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copa yeah. America, Euros, Olympics. Too much to talk Jeez, about. Man. So. I'm just glad we are telling every player not to go. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> bro. The, see, we but we stop them all. You yeah, know, yeah, before, yeah, cool. before you, do, you come carry Chelsea again, come inside. No, no, Terry yeah, Henry say this is the worst, this is the most suggestions you got since high school. But I'm <laughs> 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 so, yeah, Tully, thanks again for joining us on this one. And as always, ATW dominates the conversation. This has been a Gold Coast Reports production. Catch up on episodes and discover more shows from our network on listen to gcr.com.